In our last lecture, we were discussing about the stereogeometry, and uh, there we had seen that uh, how to recover the depth information which is originally lost in the two dimensional projection of a particular scene, and how to recover that using two views. And we had considered the lateral stereogeometry model in which we had assumed that the two cameras, the left camera and the right camera are displaced with respect to each other in the x direction. So, primarily we had assumed a distance of separation delta x between the left camera and the right camera and we had obtained the expression for the unknown depth in terms of the uh, focal length of the camera, the distance of separation and the relative uh, shift in the position of the corresponding image point in the left view and the right view. So, we had got expressions like this, where this z naught which we have over here, the z naught was written in terms of lambda, delta x, xl and xr, where xl and xr are the positions of the image point as reference to the left camera's coordinate system. And since the displacement is delta x, so xr plus delta x basically gives us the uh, uh, point which we are seeing on the right camera, but with the del x displacement added, it gets translated to the left camera's corresponding point and xl minus xr plus delta x is giving us the shift and it is this shift or the displacement which is described in the literature as disparity. The term which we very often used in literature is called disparity and primarily disparity means it is the same as this xl minus xr plus delta x this gives us the disparity. So, what we had obtained in the last class was that the unknown depth z naught was inversely proportional to the disparity x l minus x r plus delta x. And we had considered the geometrical arrangement of this nature. So, we had the left camera coordinate system x y z the right camera's coordinate system x prime y prime z prime their relationship being just in the x direction there is a displacement by an amount delta x okay and we had an unknown point uh, p over here and p's image uh, and corresponding to p the image points where p l having coordinates x l y l in the left camera and p r is the corresponding point in the right camera with coordinates x r and y r. So, with respect to uh, this uh, p l and p r, we had uh, done our analysis. Now, a question that arises is this, that if supposing we have located a particular point p l in the left image. All right, and we would like to determine the unknown point P, the depth for the unknown point P we would like to determine, but we know only P L. Now, that means to say that if we want to determine the depth of the unknown point P, what we must do? We must find out its corresponding point P R in the right camera. All right, now if we want to search for the corresponding point p r in the right camera. The pertinent question that comes to our mind is that over which region are we going to search for it? All right. The question that we have here is if we have the left image over here and if we have the right image over here and if there is a point p l in the left image, then we have to find out the corresponding point in the right image. But 
without putting any constraint what we can say is if we want to search for a corresponding position of PL in the right image then we should search over a two dimensional space isn't it because the point can lie anywhere on this two dimensional plane on the right camera. So, if there are n number of pixels in the x direction and n number of pixels in the y direction then over n square number of pixels we have to make a search. But just think about it if such a kind of search we have to do for every such points okay every such candidate points from the left image because PL is not the only point that we have in the left image. There may be lot of other points as well in the left image and we would like to search for all these points coming from the left image we have to find out its corresponding position in the right image. So, for every such candidate we need to search over a region of n by n pixels that is to say over n square pixels and our computational complexity in that process is going to be extremely large. So, now what we have to think over is that can we reduce this much of computation? Can we simplify our search range? That is what we are going to discuss in today's class. Now, let us go back to our diagram which we had presented in the last class. Now, we have a point P L over here and corresponding to the point P L, okay, we are having this P L and this C L. C L is the optical center of the left camera. P L and C L we are joining and we are extending this straight line. Now, this straight line or rather the ray is naturally a straight line in the three dimensional space. Now, obviously, one physical constraint that comes about is that corresponding to this that the corresponding image point P R in the right camera, okay, its um, uh, I mean position in the three dimensional space should be lying somewhere on this particular straight line. Now, that means to say that we have to determine that this particular ray which we have by joining P L and C L and extending this ray. We do not know where this point P is. Okay. If we extend this ray P L C L, okay, then for this ray what is going to be the corresponding image in the right camera? Can anybody tell that what is going to be the corresponding image for this? three dimensional straight line in space is it going to be a point is it going to be a region or is it going to be a straight line excellent somebody has given the correct answer that it is going to be a straight line basically we have a ray joining PL and CL and this particular ray will be mapped in the right camera as a straight line so, obviously, if we are searching for the corresponding point of P, PL, okay, on the right camera, if we are searching over the entire n square region, okay, we are making some wasteful efforts, isn't it? Because after all, we know that this will be mapped into a, this straight line in three dimensional space will be mapped into a straight line in the 2D space. So, naturally, we have to search only over a straight line, but we have to think over that what kind of straight line will that be? I mean should that be a straight line? I mean if we have the point PL over here, should the straight line be like this or the straight line will be like this or the straight line will be horizontal like this or the straight line will be vertical like this? Unless I do not know anything about the nature of the straight line, Again, I am not making a good use of the search space. So, I have to make sure about the nature of that straight line. Now, again, I go over to the camera geometry which we considered in the earlier class. The camera geometry considered is pretty simple. 
the two cameras okay are looking straight with their z axis okay absolutely parallel to each other they are absolutely looking straight and on this type of a geometry if we have a point pl okay on to the i mean on the left camera and we are joining p then what will be the nature of the straight line for pr can anybody predict somebody has said that this the straight line on which the corresponding point pr must lie will be a straight line parallel to x axis that is what somebody has uh, predicted let us see whether that prediction is correct or not i again go back to the relationship which we had in the last class for the left camera this is the relationship we got x not by xl was equal to y not by yl and that was equal to lambda minus z not by lambda and for the right camera we had obtained this particular expression now just look at it just look at this particular portion we have y not by yl is equal to lambda minus z not by lambda y not by yr is equal to lambda minus z not by alpha uh, by lambda so obviously what is the immediate conclusion that we are having y l is equal to y r so if y l is equal to y r in that case what is said is correct that is to say if the point p l is having its y coordinate as y l okay then the corresponding point p r is going to have a coordinate y r which is equal to y l so that means to say that the such region is going to be a straight line which is parallel to the x axis because the y coordinate for the left point and the corresponding right camera's point they are going to be the same we have already determined that yl is equal to yr from these equations 3 and 4 yl is equal to yr and as a result of that the corresponding such region for pl in the right camera is going to be a straight line so which means to say that if i have in the left camera a point pl like this then the corresponding point pr must lie along this straight line all right so which means to say that now our search is not going to be over n by n number of pixels but the search is going to be over only n pixels so i have reduced the search region now somebody can still say that is there any further simplification that we can do whereby i can constrain my region of search further the reason why i am telling it is that on a particular uh, i mean for a particular y okay let us say that on the left camera i have let's say this many six or seven points actually typically the number of points will be much more but let us say that we have these many points on the left camera and we have to search for the corresponding point in the right camera so if for every point i consider a region of n okay then there is also a possibility that if these are the points on the right camera then which corresponds to what which point corresponds to which point of the right image okay if we make any mistake in finding out that then that gives rise to a false matching between the x uh, i mean between the left image's candidate point and the right image's candidate point and obviously if there is such false matching it gives rise to a false depth value and false depth value obviously means that it gives me an erroneous three dimensional profile all right so naturally in order to reduce such false matches what i should do is that if for a particular candidate i know what is going to be my search range if the search range is further constrained okay then 
possibly finding out the corresponding point okay in the process of finding out the corresponding point we we will be making less of mistakes okay there are less chances of false matching if the search region is further constrained that is the first advantage second advantage is of course the if the search region is less if the search region is even less than n that's what we are trying to tell over here then the total computations which are involved that's also less so that the entire process of stereo matching will be faster if the search region is less so let us see how to reduce that search region now again i consider the same camera geometry that is to say this is the left camera's coordinate this is the right camera's coordinate p is the point in space and now without making any loss of generality okay we can consider the xz plane alone and on the xz plane okay we can do the geometric analysis to find out the search region let us say that even the point p is also lying on the xz plane if we do that simplifying assumption then we can see that how to uh, obtain the search region under the constraint case and this we can do of course without any loss of generality so let us have the diagram So, this is for the left camera and let us say this is the right camera's position and I am assuming the x axis in this particular direction. So, this is the direction of x axis I L is the center of the left images plane okay i r is the center of the right camera's plane and on this direction is my z axis so this is the z direction and i have assumed the point c l that is the center of the left images uh, uh, I mean the center of the left camera's uh, optical center for the left camera is CL and for the right camera the optical center is at the point CR and I have considered that their focal lengths are equal and focal length is equal to lambda. So, this is lambda and lambda is equal to focal length and it is equal for the left as well as the right camera. Now, I consider a point P L over here, P L on the left camera. So, let me now extend P L with C L, all right and I do not know where this point P is in the three dimensional space. So, I will complete this ray little later. Now, all that I can say is that this point P L is going to lie within this limit and this limit for the photographic plate. So, I have assumed that this is this point the extreme left side point is L and the right side point is E for this left camera. Okay. So, if I now extend this L with C L,
and if I extend E with CL then one thing which I can say is that this point PL is going to lie over this region I mean it will be bounded by this ray and this ray because this ray is for the extreme left side point and this ray is for the extreme right side point for the left camera. So, this ray will be contained within this zone all right. Very similarly for the right camera our situation is like this. All right. Let us say this point is T and this point is R. Okay. So that any point PR that lies on the right camera should be in between this T and the point R. IR is the optical center. Now, I extend this ray from PL further. Now, tell me if the point P happens to be somewhere over here. Let us say I have the point P over here. In that case, will it be seen by both the cameras? No. Certainly not seen by both the cameras because if I extend this point P, if I take this to be the three dimensional point P and I extend P with CR and proceed okay, that intersects this plane outside the visibility zone of the right side camera. So, because we have considered the extreme limits of its dimensions T and R. Okay, so, that is the reason why I, I will not be able to see this particular point P on the right camera, but I am seeing this from the left camera. So, it means to say what that this particular that for this particular point we are unable to get a binocular view or we are unable to get a stereo view because it is not being seen by both the cameras. But if the point P lies exactly over here, what do you think? will be seen on the right side camera. Extreme right. So, the answer, the correct answer that has come from the class is that if the point P is over here, then by joining P with CR, I get this point R. That means to say that the corresponding image point on the right hand side is on R. Okay. So, that means to say that the point has become just visible. If I consider the point P over here, what happens? Is the point visible or not visible? <laughs> the point is visible in the right side image also, isn't it? Let us say I have the point P over here. Okay, and I join P with CL, CR sorry and this is the position where I have PR. If, if the point P is actually lying over here, okay, that is to say if the point P is lying over this zone which I am shading over here. If the point P lies on this zone, okay, then we can see it from both the cameras. All right. Now, let us say that 
this distance, I mean that both these photographic plates are having a width of h, so that from this point to this point, I have got a width equal to h by 2. So, this is h by 2, this distance is also equal to h by 2. Okay. So, if we do that, then we have the following bounds for XR. Given a particular point PL, okay, we can have these limits for XR. We can write that XR is going to lie between XL minus delta X and minus delta x plus h by 2. This is going to be the limits for xr. I will tell you how it comes. What is the distance between Cl and Cr? The distance of separation between this z axis and the z prime axis for the right camera? Delta x. So, this distance is delta x and this being the positive x direction, this distance is actually minus delta x and if I go from uh, go to minus delta x minus h by 2, what do I get? I get this extreme point r over here, alright? So, minus delta x minus h by 2, that means to say that this expression which I am, uh, I have written minus within parenthesis delta x plus h by 2 gives me this position r. So, this limit, this particular limit I am getting when the image is at this point r. Is that clear? <coughs> and what is the other limit? Can anybody tell me? I mean, if P L is known to us, okay? Can anybody tell me that what is going to be the other limit? Is it T or something less than T? Something less than T. Why something less than T? If P L is the corresponding point, okay, what is going to be the corresponding point P R? Can, can P R lie on T? Why can't it? Well, this is the region in which it is seen by both the cameras. So, I can extend, I mean I do not have space to show here, but I can extend my ray farther and farther on this particular region. Yes. Yes. That is the distance from L to P L. Uh -huh. If you, that much of distance you have to take it off from T. So, till that such point the image will not be there. That means from point T, if you travel a distance equal to L T L. So okay. That distance is nothing but H by 2 minus X. Okay. I think the uh, correct thinking is obviously there. Now, let us consider that what is going to be the extreme limit. In the extreme limit, my, uh, I mean this point P is going to lie at infinity. And if the point P lies in infinity, in that case, okay, the disparity or the displacement is going to be 0. And if the displacement is going to be 0, then this distance LPL will be equal to the distance PPR. So, we must have this point PR okay at such a position in the limit such that the distance tpl and the distance uh, tpr and the distance lpl should be equal and it is based on this constraint only that we have got the other limit as xl minus delta x obviously this point is xl with respect to il il is the center of the um, i mean the, uh, the coordinate center so, with respect to IL, this is XL, point PL is XL and if I go by a distance XL minus delta X, I land up in this point PR, 
such that TPR is equal to LPN. Is that clear to all of you? So, this is the limit that we have got. So, we have to search not over the entire n pixels on the uh, I mean horizontal axis rather instead of searching over the entire number of pixels uh, I, I mean instead of searching over this entire horizontal scan line within a distance t r I should rather search for a distance p r and r which is less than t r alright now here one assumption which I am making is that this point p okay can lie at infinity also. Now, in many of the practical situations, we do not have object points okay, whose z coordinate is at infinity, but rather we can, it is quite reasonable to assume in many of the practical cases, some upper limit of depth. Like I can say that if I draw, if I happen to draw a line like this and say that this is going to be my z max okay the maximum depth then obviously our search region will get further reduced isn't it all right now before we go into that analysis we will do that also that assuming some upper limit of z okay what is the search region that we get before we do that it is also interesting to do one more analysis. We can, now can we determine the depth of this point P if its depth is less than this much of distance? So, I have assumed this distance to be a distance D and if the Z coordinate of the point P is less than this D, okay, which I have written, if it is less than D, then I cannot see this point P from both the cameras. And if I can't see the point P from both the cameras, obviously I can't determine the depth. So, if I tell that this point, this point of intersection of this ray LCL and RCR, okay, both extended, I assume they are intersecting at the point S. So, if the distance from S to this position is equal to D, then this D is the minimum depth for the, for the point P. So, I can write this as D min, alright? And if this is equal to D min, okay, if this distance is equal to D min, then from this diagram, okay, I can say that the Z naught. What is Z naught? Z naught is the depth of the point P. I have assumed that the point P is having a coordinate X naught, Y naught, Z naught. So, Z naught is the unknown depth. So, obviously, Z naught is going to be greater than or equal to. Let us not assume this distance of D min. Okay, D min is the minimum depth and we also assume this distance. Let us call this distance to be D1. That is to say, from the optical center of the camera to this point S, this distance I am calling as D1. Alright? So that my Z0 has to be greater than or equal to D1 plus lambda because D, uh, D mean is nothing but D1 plus lambda. So, Z0 is greater than or equal to D min, rather I can write it as D1 plus lambda and what is D1 in terms of the known parameters, lambda is known to us, delta x is known to us and h is known to us. What is D1 okay, in terms of lambda? delta x and h can anybody tell this is clear from this geometry all right take 
this triangle, all right? This triangle is having, I mean, take these two triangles, this one and this one. That is SLR and SCLCR. Take these two triangles. The distance from L to R is lambda x plus h. The distance between CL to CR is delta x, okay? And this is delta x plus h. L to R is delta x plus h. So, from this similar triangles, okay, it is possible to deduce that d1 is equal to, you can verify this, d1 is equal to lambda into delta x divided by h. Is that correct? Okay. So, you have already verified. This is equal to lambda into delta x by h. So, that the minimum depth, okay, z0 can be written as lambda delta x divided by h plus lambda. So, this expression is very important that if the point P is having a depth beyond this, then only you can try to recover its depth, uh, I mean depth from the two views. Then only because, then only it will be visible from both the cameras. Now, I have assumed some maximum depth instead of calling this as z max let me call this as d max so d max is the maximum depth for the point so d max is the maximum depth for point p okay if we do that then again from the similar triangles okay you can find out that the such region becomes now obviously on this side the limit is still this point r okay if even if i assume a maximum depth over here okay still my extreme limit on this side is that the image can be at the point r because if this is the ray then i have the image point at r okay but all that i am doing is that instead of assuming the depth to be infinity i am assuming the depth to be at the point uh, i mean the depth to be less than infinity so that the corresponding image point will be lying to the right of this point PR. So, the search region will be little less and it is less by this much of amount. Of course, on this side, the same limit holds good. For this point R, the limit is minus delta x plus h by 2 and on the other side, we have xl minus lambda x xl minus lambda x we had got for the point pr you remember for the point pr we had got xl minus lambda x but assuming a maximum depth d max we will be getting this as lambda into delta x divided by d max okay and in this expression lambda is positive delta x is positive d max is positive so that we have to so that this expression will be less than xl minus delta x and as a result of that okay our total search range is going to be less as compared to the original search range of prr okay is this clear to you so, we will have the point now at PR prime and for PR prime this is the limit XL minus delta X minus lambda delta X divided by D max and we have PR R okay should be greater than PR prime R. So, as a result of that because PR prime R is less than PR R okay the search region is 
less. All right. Any questions or difficulties? All right. Somebody wanted me to repeat the last part. What we are having is in in the earlier case our limits were means when we permitted the point P to lie at infinity the limits were between minus del x plus h by 2 and xl minus delta x. Okay? When we permitted infinity depth but when I am permitting a maximum depth d max in that case the limits change the limits on this side does not change it is still minus delta x plus h by 2 but on the other side it becomes xl minus delta x minus lambda delta x by d max and obviously you can clearly see from here that the image point okay, corresponding to pl the point in the right image is if its point is at pr prime then this pr prime is going to be going to lie on the right of this point pr so as a result the search region now is the distance r pr prime instead of r pr and r pr prime is a distance which is less than r pr uh, r pr prime is a distance less than r pr okay so we have reduced the search zone all right any doubts Sir, if there are multi points between r and pr uh, which okay. way corresponding to the particular multi points in your sub hash plate what would happen which, how can we match to one to one okay it's a very interesting question somebody has asked the question is that in between this zone R P R, we are having multiple number of points and we have to decide about the point corresponding to P L. So how to decide? Well, the task is not an easy task and mind you, it will be so in all practical cases, it will be so that within the zone R P R, we will be having such multiple number of points really. So, we have to avoid false match and choose the correct one. So, we have to go over to the topic of stereo correspondence of stereo matching in order to properly answer this question. But since we are not going over to the, uh, since we are uh, not discussing about stereo matching over here, okay, let me tell you very briefly what is normally done. What we do is, we take I mean whenever we are considering this uh, such points PL and all the other candidates from the left, left image naturally those points are some points of interest for the object. So corresponding to those point of interest there will be some specific features specific features means intensities its intensity is on the left hand side its intensity on the right hand side okay or they may be just the set of boundary pixels that is to say only the age pixels. So there may be features of this kind and we will be matching feature points with feature points and that is why whenever we have such kind of multiple candidates okay, within which we have to decide the correct match for such kind of things okay, we have to take the feature property also into account. The feature parameters also should be kept under, uh, under consideration and the matching okay, will be done based on such feature parameters. Okay. Wherever we find the maximum feature parameter similarity okay, amongst the, I mean, supposing in between the region R, P, R, I have five candidates. Okay. So, in order to decide that which one out of these five candidates will be the matching for this point PL, alright. I will see that which is the point that gives best parameter matching, okay. And I will choose that point only, alright. 
but that is the subject of stereo matching or what is known as stereo correspondence and it is quite an involved subject and uh, we are not covering this stereo matching under the uh, digital image processing course over here okay but a uh, lot of useful references are available okay on stereo correspondence so any other questions okay now let me uh, also tell some particular observations all right now uh, one thing that let us say that we have some maximum depth so we again consider this kind of a stereo geometry So this is the left camera, IL center, this is the right camera, IR center, this is CL, this is CR, okay. They have the distance delta X in between them and I have assumed that this is the maximum depth, okay. That is to say that I have this distance equal to D max. All right. Okay. Last time I think we had considered this D max. Okay. I made a mistake. Actually, this D max which I had defined. Okay. Please make this correction. This D max which I had defined should not be defined from this point to this point, but from this distance of optical center. So, this is not correct. So. I should have this distance as D max. This is CL, this is CR. So from this line to this line is my D max. Only then the expression which we had did, uh, shown okay, will be correct. So I am assuming this to be D max and this is the, let us say that we have the, uh, we have a point R prime over here and we have a point L prime over here all right and right uh, I think uh, it's a bit uh, involved diagram okay what I okay I mean there should be an attempt to redraw this Without that, I will not be able to show it fully. Now I can show. So this was my point S. That is L. This I have considered to be L. This is CL. And this I have considered to be R this is CR, so the ray joining C, uh, RCR and LCL, they are intersecting at this point S. So, which is the zone visible to both the cameras? Obviously, this zone. Alright. Now, just see, 
if if i consider some point p over here okay if the point p lies in this zone then it is visible to both the right and uh, i mean both the left and the right camera but if it is on this side then it is not visible to both now if we take this point to be r prime and we take this point to be l prime and this is already s so whatever is visible within i, I mean whatever i mean if the uh, point p lies within this zone r prime l prime s okay only then it will be visible to both the cameras so now uh, i join r prime with cl and supposing here i got a point which i call as r double prime now if the point pl okay if the point pl lies within r double prime e okay what can you say about this point pl or what can you say about the corresponding three dimensional point p if pl lies within this zone r double prime e it can't be seen by both the cameras so that means to say that the moment i find that the point pl lies within r double prime e i can immediately conclude that this point will not be visible to both the cameras so this is not our binocular point now if the point pl lies within l and r double prime are you sure that this will be visible to both the cameras why not yes somebody has told correctly that if i have the point pl between l and r double prime there is no certainty that it will be visible to the right camera also because the point p i mean supposing this is pl and the point p can lie on this zone that is it may lie within r r prime cl s and if it lies within this zone r prime cl s then it will not be visible to both the cameras supposing the point p lies over here okay r prime s l prime do you think that this will be always visible to the right camera if the point p just i repeat my question if the point p lies within the zone r prime s l prime is it visible to the right camera also always always somebody has given the answer always but let us think about some possibility like this so always means what fine i can join this ray p i mean from p i can join cr and the point where it intersects this okay this will give me the point pr now supposing i have a i have some obstacle over here supposing i have an obstacle on this region okay then can you see the point p you can the ray from p to cr okay that itself is getting blocked over here and we will not be able to see this point p so don't think that if the point p lies within this zone r prime s l prime it will be visible to both the cameras it will be visible to both the cameras provided there is no obstruction or what is described in the literature as occlusion so whenever you have occlusions then you can't have a view of the i mean you can't have a second view okay so this is 
one uh, interesting observation and we will conclude our discussions on stereo geometry in the next class in which we will see that how to decide about this delta x this was our distance delta x and we will see that if we make delta x too small then what happens and if we make delta x too large then what happens this is what we will discuss in the next class and then we will introduce the next topic all right thank you